Aloha champions! Today is Wednesday, April 8th, 2020. Today is going to be slightly different and a new learning experience for everybody involved in your packets that you have at home. Today was slated as our mid-unit content assessment. So assessment is a quiz or test, but because we're not at our physical school, I want you to do your best to try your best to find a quiet spot where you can focus on this. I will make today's assessment an open book or open video assessment. So you can go back to any of the videos I've uploaded or go through the reader if you happen to have it at home. Okay. For this video, I am simply reading off the questions for those scholars who need it so that you can hear the questions being read out loud. And so if there's any words you have difficulty understanding or pronouncing, I'm doing that for you now. Okay, so this is just me reading through each question and what to do. Okay, so this is the mid-unit content assessment for Wednesday, April 8th. Question number one. The study of the makeup of the earth and the processes that change and shape it is called A. Archaeology B. Geology C. Ecology or D. Geography Question number two. Which statement best explains the theory of plate tectonics? Is it A. Earth's tectonic plates have been slowly moving and interacting for billions of years. B. Earth's tectonic plates are far apart and are fixed in place. C. Earth's tectonic plates are far apart but are slowly moving closer to one another. Or D. Earth's tectonic plates fit tightly together and are fixed in place. Question number three, which of the following is the most accurate statement about myths? A, myths are told to teach important life lessons. B, myths help explain unpredictable natural events. C, myths are told to make children laugh. Or D, Myths are historically accurate accounts of past events. Think back to our final project that we did before we went on this break. We did posters and we designed our um, assemblies for certain myths about volcanoes. So that might help you think to uh, answer question three. Moving on in our test. This is page 154, the second page in. This question has two parts, answer part A and then answer part B. Question number four, part A. Place the following labels on the diagram in the appropriate locations. Inner core, outer core, mantle, and crust. Each one of these will be one of those four terms. For part B, write the name of each of Earth's layers next to its characteristics in the following chart. Again, you have the four terms, inner core, outer core, mantle, and crust. The characteristics. The first characteristic we have is, is Earth's largest and thickest layer. It consists of very hot, very dense rock. Characteristic number two. It is solid made of very hot metal, may be nearly as hot as the sun's surface. It is the innermost layer. Characteristic number three, it is thin, rocky, the outermost layer, two types, oceanic and continental. The last characteristic, it is liquid and made of very hot metal. Okay, moving on now to question number five. Oh, question number 11, I did have a mishap with the printing, so it is okay that these are out of order, just as long as we do our best to answer all of them, okay? 
Question number 11. This is page 157. Read the statement in the what is the cause column. Choose the statement that best relates to the information in the what is the cause column and write the letter of the statement in the what evidence is there column. So you have two columns. What is the cause and what evidence is there? What is the cause? Water drains down into openings in the ground above a magma chamber. Heat from the magma turns the water scalding hot. As the hot water rises back up through the openings below Earth's surface, it turns into steam, which increases the pressure, forcing the mixture of steam and hot water rushing and bubbling upward. What evidence is there? Okay, so choose one of these four that best matches the cause. Is it A, a tsunami forms and grows as it moves towards land? B, a geyser explodes above Earth's surface as a hissing fountain of hot water and steam? C, an igneous rock breaks down into sediments, later forming sedimentary rock? Or D, a crater forms at the top of a volcano. Which of these four is caused by that? Okay. Question number 12. Which of the following word pairs completes the statements? So I'm going to read the statement and then you pick the best selection with the two words that complete this the best. Seafloor spreading is the process of oceanic plates moving apart very slowly. When the seafloor dips down as one tectonic plate slides under another, a narrow, extremely deep valley called a blank is created. When oceanic plates move away from one another and form cracks in Earth's crust, an underwater mountain called a blank is created. Is this statement referring to it? A, a geyser and a hotspot. B, a hotspot and a geyser. C, an ocean trench and a mid-ocean ridge. Or D, mid-ocean ridge and ocean trench. So the first word is what you think goes in the first blank. The second word is what you think goes in the second blank. Question number 13. Moving apart, colliding, and sliding sideways past one another are three ways in which blank move. Is it A, continents, B, tectonic plates, C, faults, or D, mid-ocean ridges? Question number 14. Label the following statements with the appropriate term related to how scientists measure earthquake intensity. You're either using a seismograph or a Richter scale. One of those two terms to answer questions A and B. Question A. Numbers describe the intensity of earthquakes based on the largest seismic wave recorded. B. Jagged up and down lines show the energy of seismic waves. Question number 15. Scientists observe that blank, which provided evidence of changes over time on Earth's surface. Okay, so is this blank A, land never moved or changed, B, the same types of rocks and fossils were found in different places, C, the climate of Antarctica was extremely cold, or D, animals that once lived on land later lived underwater. Question number 16. Which of the following do geysers, volcanoes, and hot springs have in common? A. They form along faults. B. Scientists know when they will erupt. C. They form both along plate boundaries and above hot spots. Or D. They only form along plate boundaries. Back now to question number five. This should be the order in which it is printed in your packet. Question number five, page 155. Place a check mark next to the 
each item in the chart that is a characteristic of tsunamis. So only put a check mark if it is true of tsunamis. Our characteristics. Tsunamis form when earthquakes occur in oceanic crust, causing the seafloor to shift. Yes or no. Tsunamis travel fast, as much as 500 miles per hour. Yes or no. Tsunamis are easy to stop as long as scientists have enough warning when they begin to form. Yes or no. Tsunamis can grow to become as tall as three or four story buildings. Yes or no. Question number six. Read this statement in the what is the cause column. Choose the statement that best relates to the information in the what is the cause column and write the letter of the statement in the what evidence is there column. Okay, so cause and then what evidence is there. What is the cause? Tremendous pressure and heat in the mantle force magma in a chamber below Earth's crust to move upward through a crack in Earth's surface. Is this A, a fault black mountain forms, B, glaciers deposit sediments on Earth's surface, C, magma erupts from a volcano's top onto Earth's surface as a lava, D, a tectonic plate subducts beneath another plate. Question number seven, volcano myths often explain volcanic activity by A, describing how gods and goddesses cause volcano-related occurrences. B, providing scientific evidence showing how volcano-related events occur. C, telling how occurrence above Earth's surface cause volcanic activity. Or D, telling how occurrences below Earth's surface cause volcanic activity. Last page, we should have questions 8, 9, and 10. Okay, so question number 8. You are going to label each of the following volcano descriptions with an appropriate word. Is it active, dormant, or extinct? A. A volcano that has not erupted for at least 10,000 years and is not likely to erupt again. B. A volcano that has erupted in the past 10,000 years and is likely to erupt again. C. A volcano that hasn't erupted for a long time, but could erupt again. Question number nine. Which of the statements best explains the relationship between earthquakes and faults? A. Earthquakes cause faults to form along plate boundaries. B. Faults are cracks in Earth's crust that form when earthquakes occur. C. Faults and earthquakes are two words to describe the same geological process. D. Earthquakes begin with huge blocks of rock moving along faults. 10. Place a check mark next to each item in the chart that Alfred Wegener's continental drift hypothesis helped explain. Okay. Continental drift hypothesis explained that Long ago, Earth had one huge landmass called Pangaea. Yes or no. Continental drift hypothesis explained that as continents moved apart, their climates changed. Yes or no. Continental drift hypothesis explained that drifting continents actually moved due to tectonic plates. Yes or no. Continental drift hypothesis explained that groups of plants and animals that once lived together were separated as the continents moved apart. Yes or no. So those are 16 questions for this quiz. Try your best to do this. You can use your book. You can look at the videos to help you, but I want you to try to do this on your own and submit your answers uh, via Google Classroom. Thank you for your time. Tomorrow will be Thursday, April 9th, and I will be scheduling out a live uh, review for the math before we do the math assessment uh, at your own pace. Okay. Thank you for tuning in. Please let me know if you have any questions, and hopefully I'll talk to you soon. Bye.